Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, my first episode, finally, <laughs> once I finished something, of um, US Most Wanted Know It to Hide, or more specifically the One Pound Gaming series. Uh, excuse me that I was turned down the volume uh, of the whole game. This game is... easy way to describe it is Imagine Rainbow Six, the tactical shooter series, especially the earlier games. Uh, crossed with a Chuck Norris film, where obviously Chuck Norris, or even any sort of film, Jet Li, or something similar, um, it's a single man versus it's a man, it's one versus the masses, basically. It's well, I will show you. Let's get right into this. Uh, like Total Biscuit, I will show you the options menu pretty quickly. You can pause it if you want to see. Uh, you can actually change what the character damage does, which is quite handy. I'll just keep everything high, because this is an oldish game. Now, uh, I did get this for a pound. Don't know how much that is in dollars. I've used cheats to get all the missions. But, um, I will show you the... not the apartment, that's... Uh, a boring one. Some of these are really difficult. I've not tried all of them. The majority have certain win conditions that are almost impossible. The train is ridiculous, but uh, the highway tunnel, this is where I had to use cheats because you've got to protect, no, you've got to prevent people from escaping, but it's almost impossible to fight your way to the point where they are before they leave. So I had to use cheats to get all of these. There is a story, it's basically a single man taking out lots of terrorist uh, leaders and occasional terrorists. Yeah. I have a save here going in blind, which I did uh, when I was first trying this with a friend. Um, so, create a new gate. No, actually, I can just use this one. I'm going to show you the restaurant, which is uh, one of the easiest missions. Still pretty hard, though. So, uh, as you can tell, we have a setup screen. I'll quickly blaze through this because you can see we've got long, close range weapons, handguns, explosives, and other, which are just binoculars and toolkits. No idea what the toolkit does. And obviously, ammo, like most tactical games actually, but the majority forget to do that, which is quite nice to be honest. This I would say is one of my favourite parts of the game. Uh, armour, however, doesn't actually do anything, and you'll see why soon. Um, so probably the best weapon for this, let me check, you can attach su suppressors to weapons. It doesn't always work, that is the only issue. But when it does work, it's worth it. M4 suppressed is one of the best. See, it's conf a bit confusing, so remove, remove. Okay. M4 suppressed as primary. It uses, let's see. Uh, oh, you can just select that one from here, okay. I think you can have a ridiculous amount of ammunition. I think 300 is probably too much, but uh, oh well. Um, you can have two of the same weapon, one silenced and one unsilenced, which is quite cool. I'll take a shotgun with about 10 rounds, and a pistol, yeah, compulsory. Desert Eagle's probably the best, but yeah, Desert Eagle. And just, see, I, I have 35 rounds, I'll just fill this up with ammo. You can see I have a weight limit over here. Um, sorry if I'm going through this pretty quickly, but uh, I'm using the trial version of Bandicam. That was over the 10 minute limit, shouldn't take that long, but I hate to think that it would stop recording, I have to edit this massive video together, uh, but I may, let's see, uh, anyway, okay, as you can see here, person you're looking for is, yep, in the restaurant, flashy clothes, right, the environment here is pretty detailed, and you can change different weapons here, so I'm changing to shotgun and such, um, you can't aim pistols, and they are pretty useless, because, just look, look, it's not accurate at all. These are basically for when you run out of ammo, but you may as well just take more ammo for your main weapons. Now this is silenced, I will try shooting it. Might be too quiet for the recording, but it is extremely quiet. But not silent. That is good, and enemies actually pick up. Oh, okay. Uh, that is X's jump, confusingly, and C is crouch. Um, so, you can actually, you you walk by standard and then when you sprint you run afterwards until you stop moving or crouch. So, 
There is a bug on this map that really <laughs> bugs me. <laughs> um, that wasn't funny. Uh, let me just see. Yeah, space to open doors. This gets confusing if you're not used to it. So, see if I put my weapon away when I moved into a wall. Clicking just brings it back down. So you can hold it up if you don't. If you're not sure who's on the other side, this is the bug. Let me. You can see there was not much happening there. Someone will come through this way, maybe. Get the shotgun. We'll know if someone comes in. Basically, this guy should pick up his pistol, but does not. Um, so he literally doesn't do a single thing. You can... I don't know if you can take weapons. Uh, I haven't noticed a way to do so, but maybe I'm just missing something. Here we go. Someone's not paying attention to me. Now, I will show you... See, the physics choice for what shooting actually does is probably better overall. Um, but it is still nice to have that choice since I'm assuming the physics isn't too great in this. Uh, no one seems to have like been concerned at all about that. I'll just shoot the chef because why not. I'm not sure why no one is coming because normally I would be attacked by this point unless... Right, usually that guy being dead means things happen. Uh, you may see why I said armor is useless here. Yeah, here we go. That's the guy I have to eliminate. You see how quickly I take out those enemies? See, see how quickly he died? That's exactly how quickly you die. I'm not kidding. See that health meter in the corner where it shows my red head or did show? Yeah. That happens a lot. This game is hard. And for once it's actually... it makes sense. Sometimes it can be a bit unfair. Ooh didn't notice some of these. <laughs> sometimes the game can be a bit unfair. Far too unfair actually. Sometimes there's just ridiculous moments of stupidity where things couldn't possibly have happened but did anyway. Uh, but if you overlook those you get a pretty decent game to be honest. So here I'm gonna go in with silence pistol and an RPG because why not. Uh, you can actually see your own body but it is a bit glitchy because there is a multiplayer on this game, at least, let me just check. I think there's multiplayer, I don't know, because this is one of the explosive boxes, the ones that um, sold the game like as a budget release, like a lot of these games I've got, so um, I don't. it doesn't show the specs for it, it doesn't show what it recommends or anything, so I don't know if it actually does have multiplayer. Um, but I'm going to assume it does because I think I remember setting a match up just to see if it worked. Um, I'm going to test how meaty these explosives are. Uh, guys over there. See, I don't know if they react to each other's deaths, so... See, I, I th the AI in this are pretty... not not terrible. But <laughs> there are moments where I wish it would have been improved, either because the AI got a cheap shot on me or I got a cheap shot on the AI. There's usually no middle ground, and a lot of the time the missions are constructed in the AI's favour because the designers presumably assumed that you would be able to do everything. You, and you would know what was going on and how to combat it. It's not really the case. Um, for a lot of this game, I... Oh, you can lean. That's... Uh, in most games now. In a lot of games, I um, don't, won't name many, but developers seem to... oh dear. Developers seem to think that the player is completely not stupid, but doesn't understand the basics of gaming. <laughs> Mission complete, apparently. Pure stealth. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of uh, game designers seem to think that a lot of players haven't played games before, which is fair enough, because a lot of uh, people haven't. But, um... I don't really think that making the games this... If you're not used to games, you're not really going to have fun with this. See, um... Set me up automatically here, which is quite nice. See, I can have heavy armor. See how much space that takes up. I'll show you how good that is. And you'll be able to judge for yourself if it's worth it. 
just get myself. I've done most of this mission before with cheats. Oh. I've done most of this mission before with cheats. I've got heavy armor and the AK. It did stop recording back there, so there will be a jump. I apologize. I'll try and I'll try and fix that. I'm just going to quickly show you the. Ooh. See, this is pretty well done. I have to say the uh, the movement outside. I'm assuming it's just yeah, there's a tunnel, so I'd assume it just repeats the same bit, and the noise gets infuriating. But it's not bad. It reminds me of that um, Gary's mod map a lot of people have been playing for Trouble in Terrace Town and such. This is rather tense, I have to say. Not quite sure where there could be someone. But the game is well designed, and I may have said this, I did do a previous video on this game, but without commentary. Or really any sort of review. The game is good, it's just on a bad engine. Like, this is essentially just Rainbow Six with one guy. Oh god. Yeah, okay, this section, I'll try and be quieter because the noise... Uh, there we go. Whenever you stand... See here, um, I can see where there may be skybox limits. Uh, if it uses such a thing. I don't know if it does. I'm tempted to jump off the train. I really am. But the, this see, like, it's well designed. It is a well designed game. People... But then the AI themselves. You can actually change fire modes, as you can see. You might be able to see in the lower corner. You can't. I've changed it to full auto now. I change it back to single. But see, my arm's already red. That was from one shot. So this game is not very forgiving at all. It is, um, and that was with the heavy armor. I would. I want. Not sure if I should show you how I how much damage you take, or if I should just jump off. I've not actually jumped off before. It's, as soon as you get off, yeah, I've, I've died because of the train. At least there's ragdoll physics, or at least that might be an animation. It seems to be animation. The game um, does punish you a little bit harshly. This was actually made by... Um, I'm not sure, actually, because that's another thing that Explosive doesn't tell you. Uh, and I've still got the price sticker over the thing. And I got this from one of my favourite shops, it's uh, called Entertainment Exchange, uh, where there is a lot of cheap games. This is essentially why the series began, because I knew there was games there. If I just take the label off, Activision. So for all you massive Call of Duty fans out there, this was made first, or at least this was made before the newer games. Um, and yeah, it's... Um, I got this for 15 pence. That is, in sense, not much. <laughs> I, I always think that a dollar is like 60 pence, so 60% of a pound. I, that's probably not true anymore, that was probably like back in 2006 or something. But uh, that's what I'm sticking to for now, for this guess. So I'm assuming that the game is worth about... I don't, I don't know. Nine cents. <laughs> um, it's it was it's it's interesting. I will say that, but uh, the game itself is just not really. Uh, see, there, it's it's interesting and it can be fun, but you can tell where the engine limitations kind of make it stumble and stagger a bit because it's it. It's just obvious. There's obvious points where the game is clearly... See, I'm forced to have armor here, and all it does is change the amount of uh, weight I have. So I guess you could use armor for a tougher challenge. But um, the game isn't really uh, designed in such a way that it's... Uh, oh, different ammo lists, okay. Um, it's not designed in such a way that you're meant to find it f easy, fun, you're meant to kind of struggle. It's meant to not be a simulation, but to, um, but also not meant to be an arcade shooter. It's kind of, yeah, I'm just going to speed through this, see if I'm, I've just realised I've taken all the wrong ammunition. Um, oh dear, I have about mm, eight rounds, so, ah, that thing is annoying. 
but basically this game, um, I didn't know you could actually jump, which is nice, I think. You don't actually get thrown back, so there's no wind physics, at least from what I can tell. But um, this game really is a challenge. I would actually say that overall, oh dear, it, it, it suffers from the same problems that Dark Souls suffers from, and I'm not, I'm not really a fan of that at all. Oh, okay. Um, I have I have played it, but um, Dark Souls was a game designed to be hard, whereas this, the shortfalls in this game, calls it to be hard. So here I'm not dead, uh, but the train continues going and the mission have to quit manually. Uh, so that is this game. Multiplayer, I would show you, but it is essentially just the same. I have to say, it's nice, I have to say. It is like uh, Rainbow Six Raven Shield, which I may actually play on this series. Um, so yes, that was US Most Wanted No at the Hide. I'm, I just realised that the highlighted letters say US Most Wanted. <laughs> um, but, uh, I'm Mr. T-Rex, or at least that's what my channel is currently called, seeing as uh, reasons. Um, so I'm, yeah, I want to continue this series, I haven't always got a chance to record and I should probably stop babbling because I don't know how long this has gone on for since it kind of stopped recording before. So I'll just say um, this game's worth a look and uh, yeah, I will see you in the next episode or whatever I do. See you then.